Hey guys, welcome back to Maker's Corner. If you have a resin 3D printer and have always wanted to get buttery smooth time lapses of your prints, well, then this video is for you. Today, we'll be making our own DIY version of the popular resin lapse cable originally developed by Andrew Sink and Uncle Jesse. I'll be including a link down in the description to where you can buy the original resin lapse cable if you don't feel like making your own or if you want to support one of these two amazing content creators. For this project, we're only gonna need a few simple things. We'll need an open end TRS three pole, two and a half millimeter jack. We're gonna need some wire. I actually end up just using a bit of old speaker wire that I had lying around for this project. A GL5528 photoresistor and a couple of small magnets. I'll have links down in the description to some of the products that I used in this video. So let's get started. So I decided to print these out on my new Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra. And with the exception of a few little print issues on the housing, everything actually came out pretty decent and I was able to use both of them, even though technically one of the prints failed a little bit. After a quick wash and cure, it was time to take the parts outside and start painting them. Now the reason we're painting these is because this housing will be inside the printer itself, getting blasted with UV light the entire time, so we need a way to protect the housing. Once that was done, we brought it inside and started to add the magnets to the lid. Just a little dab of glue is more than enough. Next up, it was time to add our GL5528 photoresistor to the main housing. You just feed the leads into these two little holes and push it down. Once it's fully seated, we can flip it over and if you look closely, you'll be able to see uh, once the camera focuses, there we go. I included two little tabs for the two leads from the photoresistor to wrap around to lock it in place. This was a little more difficult than I had originally thought it would be, so I ended up finally just grabbing a pair of tweezers to kind of help nudge things into place and to really kind of help get some leverage and convince everything to wrap around the post properly. I then added way too much super glue to lock everything in place permanently, which ultimately ended up taking a little bit longer to dry than I would have liked. I actually ended up having to use a little old trick of using a little spritz of alcohol to help harden everything up a bit quicker. Once that's done, I grabbed some old speaker wire that we're gonna use to connect everything together, and I added some heat shrink tube over each of the wires so we don't have to worry about any electrical shorts once everything's been soldered together. I then took our two and a half millimeter jack cable and I chose to snip off the white wire because we're not gonna be using it. it. Didn't make sense to keep it there where it could potentially get in our way later. All right, so now we can solder everything together. We can take our speaker wire and connect them to the positive and negative of the two and a half millimeter uh, jack for the camera. Polarity does not matter here, so it doesn't matter which one gets soldered to which. Once that's done, we'll slide our heat shrink tube over each of the two connections and use a lighter to close everything up. I then added a larger piece of heat shrink tube over the two smaller ones to add a bit of strength and clean up the look of the cable. I then slid the other end of the cable into the housing through the small hole in the side. And then once it was through, I took the two ends and I tied them into a knot so that if the cable was ever pulled, it wouldn't put any stress on the solder joints we're about to do next. We simply need to solder the wires to each of the two leads coming off the photoresistor, and this project is nearly complete. So the last thing to do is to test it out to make sure it works before we permanently close it up. I'm going to plug it into the camera's trigger port, and then I'll simply point the sensor towards a light source to make sure it snaps a picture every time the sensor detects light. And then the last thing to do is add a little bead of super glue around the edge of the lid to seal everything up. And just like that, this project is complete. So let's take it over to the printer and see how it works. So I removed the back panel of the printer to get access to the inside where we're going to mount our device. Once the panel was off, I simply took our little resin lapse housing 
I slid it into position somewhere close to the UV light source, and then closed up the panel. Because I used thin speaker wire as our cable for this project, I had no issues getting the back panel to close with the wire sticking out. And there we have it. My camera settings were a bit off and my focus was, well, not very focused, but the device is 100% working as intended, so I think we can call this project a success. Now before we end this video, I actually made two different versions of the housing for this project. The second one, as shown here, has the magnets on the same side as the photoresistor. This way, if you have vents on the side or rear of your printer where enough UV light shines through to trigger the photoresistor, you could actually just stick this to the outside of your printer without having to open it up. Now links to all the files necessary to create this project will be down in the video description, along with step files so that if you need to change the size of the magnets or the hole on the side to fit whatever gauge wire you decide to use, you'll be able to make those adjustments very, very easily. As always, I really thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really does help small creators like myself be able to bring you guys more content. As always, hope you guys are doing great and have a wonderful day.